You are watching T Radio V, radio in TV. The Social Action Media Network and T Radio V present Creating Good Work Live with your hosts, Ron Schultz and Greg Franks. All right, well, welcome to Creating Good Work Live, where week in and week out, we uh, speak with the finest social innovators and social entrepreneurs in the country about the work that they're doing. And uh, I'm Ron Schultz. And I'm Greg Franks. And today we're, we've got a, we're doing something a little different today, which I'm very excited about. We're, uh, we're looking at both the musician in society and the artist in society, uh, which on one level is a prelude for our upcoming show on CalGov TV called uh, Cultural Communities. But, uh, which will begin airing in January, but that's uh, enough of that. Let's, that's just a little plug and we'll move on. Um, we'll get, let's get to our first guest. Our first guest today are Jill Freeman, who has been a fixture on the LA music scene for more than two decades, and she's renowned for her highly personal songwriting and her theatrical flair and performance. Uh, she has garnered rave reviews from the Album Network Sing Out magazine, and Music Connection for her de debut album, uh, Songs About Sex and Depression. <laughs> a light time. Uh, her new CD, uh, uh, A Handmade Life, has received rave reviews in American Songwriter, uh, No Depression, and Folk Radio UK, among many others. It's a great album. And she's here with Joel Walkbrit, uh, an acclaimed guitarist, composer, and producer, and a two-time winner of the prestigious BMI Film and TV Award, for the theme song, for the top theme song in a top ten show, uh, for Shark on CBS, and as a composer and songwriter for TV and film, his compositions have been heard on numerous shows, including uh, True Blood, Dexter, Modern Family, House, Bones, <laughs> Homeland, Sheesh, CSI New York, <laughs> and in a in a variety of um, of uh, films as well, including Neighbors, Begin Again and when in Rome. So we're very pleased to have you both here today. Thank you for showing up on Thank Creating you. Good Work Live. Thank you. So um, one thing that has always struck me, uh, Jill, about your music is how personal it is. Uh, it's also intelligent, wry, and, <laughs> and very stylish. Uh, but the, the level of personal honesty is amazing. Uh, as songwriters, performers, as artists, that fearless quality must be pretty challenging. Well, it, uh, I think that it was at a certain point for me, the only thing I could do was just tell the truth. That was actually when I found a, a personal voice as a mm. songwriter. Until then, I, I was sort of, oh, I'll write a happy song, oh, I'll write a sad song. It was, mm -hmm. and then I just told the truth, which was pretty scary. Yeah, I can imagine. Because it was a dark time in my life, so, I, but that's when I think my best work started to show up. Well, it's, it's really quite amazing and, and it piercing in that kind of honesty that, uh, as you'll hear, uh, uh, Jill and Joel are going to sing a couple songs for us today, which we're very excited about, too. So your work has overtones of, of Jung, of Buddhism, of Stephen Sondheim, Kurt Weill, and, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and yet, like Sondheim and Weill, there is a connection at a real human level that moves people, that uh, gives us a mirror into our own recesses. Talk a bit about your goals as a musician. You mean with this project? Yeah, well, with in general as well. I don't know that I have goals as a musician in general, except uh -huh. to speak from my heart uh -huh. um, and be honest. Uh, with this project, I just became fascinated with fairy tales and the deeper meaning. A handmade life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thank you for saying that. Um, and I am a student. I do study Jung and Buddhism, and they just filtered into this. And I'm, I'm just really interested in the deeper levels of the psyche. And so uh, that's why I was passionate about this. What about you, Joel? Are there, are there goals for you that are different than that? Well, I think goals, um, my goals have changed, in a sense, through um, working on this project. So I was actually doing a lot of what I could say is maybe not truthful music for the industry. 
and um, where you are supplying them with product, you know, like the musical equivalent of a film stock library. That you just give them something. And doing this project, Handmade Life, was really scary. And I didn't know why till I was done with it, which is that it, because it was so personal and so artistic, it kind of required me is that I produced the CD mm -hmm. to go beyond the comfort spot. I had to go out onto that diving board, that high dive, the really big one they do in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it is scary. And had to <laughs> and had to do a lot of flips. Yeah. And I've never flipped it before. <laughs> well I I'll tell you, this album <laughs> this album knocked my socks off. Thank you. And I'm I'm hoping that you'll do one of the songs from it now. We will. Okay. Do you want us to do I okay. want to do it right now. Uh, can I just you can if introduce you need to? it. It's sure. um, the second song in the album, and it's kind of the, the whole album is kind of a journey into the dark world of the psyche, and um, this is sort of the gate in. It's also kind of a picture of the landscape of my own mind. So take that as you will. This is called Letters from Murder Town. <laughs> down tires and rust drunken clowns winding streets a lost and found dope fiends dancing bears crooks who take you unawares crying kids with silent stares Oh, I miss my home of origin That dusty cornered land of sin Where good and evil all mix in Cotton candy, bathtub gin So if you see me smiling Always full and beguiling. You'll know my heart is filing letters from Murder Town. Letters from Murder Town. Letters from Murder Town. Letters from Murder
see me smiling Wistful and beguiling No, my heart is filing Letters from Murder Town Letters from How beautiful. <laughs> you know, it, it comes to me as, as a married couple, are there just a variety of challenges that you face as you're producing <laughs> product, artistic product together? Uh, yes. Take a joke. <laughs> Tell us, please, <laughs> some of the stories. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Uh, well, um, we'll be right back. <laughs> We do work, art artistically, we work really well together. We really do, we always have. Um, the other parts are harder. You know, <laughs> logistics of gigs and stuff like that. We both get tense and ah, ah, yeah. stuff. Well, and thank you. And we still cook dinner and, you yeah. know, we still like- Feed the dogs. Know, feed the dogs and yeah. have a regular life there yeah. too, yeah. It's amazing. Well, we're gonna take, we are gonna take a short break and then we're gonna come back. This is, you're watching Creating Good Work Live and our guests today, uh, our first guests today are Jill Freeman and Joel Walker. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Absolutely beautiful. We'll be right back with more Creating Good Work Live. Cardboardigami is a portable shelter that is more durable, more structural, and more comfortable than a tent. But the main advantage is that it has no assembly required to open it up and quickly use it as a shelter. This makes it ideal for an immediate disaster response structure. However, it can also be used for recreational purposes such as camping, a kid's toy, or a shade structure on the beach. And we do sell these structures in order to fund our mission to help provide privacy and protection from the elements to those who don't have it. I realized that Los Angeles is the homeless capital of the U.S. And I decided I wanted to do something to change that. Recently, with grants from the Annenberg Foundation and from Toyota, we've been able to implement a program we call Youth Employment, where we hire local homeless youth in Los Angeles to do the initial construction of cardboardigami structures. My vision for the future of cardboardigami is to be the number one disaster response organization to efficiently provide shelter to people after any type of disaster. Sustainable Law Group is a different type of law firm. Our clients are primarily social enterprises, nonprofits, and green businesses. Our mission is to provide legal counsel that is aligned with our clients' values by providing integrated, sustainable, and comprehensive solutions. We're a full service law firm. Starting a benefit corporation, cooperative, or nonprofit, the attorneys at the Sustainable Law Group are ready to support you in all stages of your business. Find out more about Sustainable Law Group at sustainablelawyer.com. Welcome back to Creating Good Work Live on T Radio V. Yes, welcome back to Creating Good Work Live on uh, on CalGov.tv and T Radio V right now, and uh, we're very pleased to have as our guests uh, Jill Freeman and Joel Walker, and um, we want to focus this segment on the musician in the community and as a troubadour, as Harold. Uh, do you feel an affinity with that tradition? Absolutely, I do. I feel like that that um, simple tradition is coming back in a, on a kind of from a groundswell kind of level. And um, I think that music creates community, especially live music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it is a conscious effort on your part to go out there and- Absolutely, yeah. 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 How, are you, how are you functioning in the f 
in the interacting of this new genre of artistry that we're facing. Uh, and at the same time, trying to find that music appeal of a story and a experience that is shared in life. Uh, is, are those, are we feeling any of these things that we used, I would feel so well in the, in the 70s or 80s, yeah. but I'm not feeling them anymore. Right, I know, I, I'm not sure, I, I have a similar experience, I'm having a similar experience, and I'm not sure, there's so much going on now, there's so much explosion of technology and choices for people to have as far as put it, where to put their attention. It's almost like there's, it, 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 it's just too much noise almost. But within that, there may be, I, I talk to people and I find that they, they, they're very into music and they're very into finding music that they like that's very individual to them. So that's very encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, whether a person can become a millionaire anymore as a songwriter <laughs> is, I'm not that optimistic about that. <laughs> but as an artist, you just do what you do. So Dylan, Dylan gets the Nobel Prize for uh, literature. Hmm. Uh, is that an aspiration now? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think that the thing that, I was just thinking about this today, that, that he's like an icon He's uh, you know, an amazing songwriter, and he's also like an icon of several decades of a, a swell of, of attention to m popular mm, music right. and to music of the day that's been going on. And I don't know if it's at the end, if we're at the end of that, or just in another phase of that. Well, but I, I'm I have more to power to him. I'm inclined to say we're not it. at the end of it. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, one thing that's interesting is. Uh, talking about the 60s and 70s, there was a there was a lot of bad music then as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we just That's don't remember true. it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it doesn't. Fortunately, it doesn't get remembered. It doesn't get remembered, <laughs> and and there's a lot of people still inspired by Bob Dylan now. Oh. Yeah, it's so. true. Yeah. So let's hear some really good music. <laughs> Why don't you guys give us another song? Thank you. This, um, is, this is from their uh, from Jill's new album, A, a Handmade Life. This is a song about a fairy tale called The Handless Maiden. I'm going to take this off so I don't bang my guitar with it. Um, the girl in the, in the story has no hands, and she's just eaten a pear from an orchard of a prince, and he's confronted her. And she's had this long story, so she stands up to him. She's all muddy and probably flea-bitten at this point, starving, and stands up to the prince, and this is what she says. Oh, a gentle stranger, hear my plea Before you set your dogs on me I stole your fruit, I must confess Your lovely tree has one Last night the angel led me here And she helped me on the golden hair For as you see before you stand A starving girl who has no hands I have no hand to make my way To feed myself What is mine?
what is mine One day I swear upon your land, these lands, I'll grow a pair of brand new hands. I have no hand to make my way, to feed myself from day to day. I have no hand for with which to fight, oh what is my Must tell us where can the audience of people find out more about you and where they can find your music. Well, uh, Handmade Life on CD Baby right. or on iTunes or on Amazon. Or on Amazon. I think, I think we've got a contact card for you. Let's see if we do or not. There it is. There you go. Yeah. JillFreemanMusic.com. That's right. JillFreeman.com. All right. So it is available. It's, it's all it's, over. It's really wonderful. It's. Thank I mean, you. this. Um, I just remember hearing this album for the first time and being absolutely blown away yes. by the you, by the uh, by the whole ambience of this yes. <laughs> and what comes of it. It was just great, and uh, we're really happy that you guys could uh, could come join us today. And Thanks for having us. And, we're and because I, I think that it's it, you know this notion of of music and its role in society is never it, we rarely talk about it we hear mm. the music but we don't hear about the the what the influence it's in our genes it's yeah. imperative to our our growth i think yeah. music and it's beautifully expressed and oh this, thanks and yeah. at this challenging time man we we need all we can get we need it? a little art right? <laughs> <laughs> we sure do <laughs> a little art <honesty. laughs> so we're going to go to a, a short break here and, and thank our guests again to Jill Freeman and, and Joel Walkwit and, and Jill's new both. album uh, Handmade Life uh, extraordinary find it listen to it you'll love it thank you very much thank, thank you thank both you. Okay. and we'll be right back with Creating Good Work Live There's more to come on Creating Good Work Live. The real question that needs to be asked, as well as answered, is what is it that we can do that is unique, that is impactful? I'm Estella Pfeiffer. This is my brilliant bus. We are going to empower every individual and every organization to do more and achieve more. I had an idea, a bus that brings technology to kids that need it most. Again. But I look in the mirror. Wow, well, look in the mirror. What do I see? What do I see? A brilliant mind. A brilliant mind. Looking back at me. 
It's this process of continuous renewal, of showing courage in the face of reality. If you dream big enough and believe in your dreams, you can make it happen. Showing that courage in the face of opportunity. What can you do in three seconds? You can blow bubbles. You can hug a friend. You can help a stranger. But also, you can put lives in danger. Dude, you're falling asleep. Jazzy driving is just as bad as drunk driving. We need to pull over. Yeah, you're right. So what can you do in three seconds? The choice is up to you. And now, here's Ron and Greg. And welcome back to Creating Good Work Live. Uh, our next guests are from Angels Gate Cultural Center in San Pedro. Cultural Center, is that correct? That's right. Okay. That's right. That's right. Uh, they are Judith Blonick and you. Wendy Milner Calloway. Yeah. And uh, Judith is uh, the chair, chair of the Angel Gate uh, Board of Directors. She is a writer, director, educator, and urban arts organizer. Mm -hmm. uh, from 2007 to 16, she uh, coordinated activities and grants for the arts, cultural, and entertainment district in downtown, historic downtown San Pedro. Uh, she keeps in shape by leading improv poetry workshops for 10-year-olds as part of the Artists in the Classrooms program at, at Angel's Gate. And Judith and I first met <laughs> many decades ago, more decades than we're willing to probably say, uh, when we were both working at the Mark Taper Forum in downtown LA. Um, and uh, it's great to have her here. And Wendy uh, is a studio artist uh, at Angel's Gate and also on the board of directors, uh, a writer and sculptor who got her start in theater as a set designer. And uh, she's been an art director an exhibit designer and novelist because she says, I like to make things up. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm, I'm, I've yet to read a novel. <laughs> At any rate, we're very pleased that you could be with us here today on uh, Creating Good Work Live. Thank you. So uh, the Angels Gate community has been around. Oh, uh, before we get to the, these questions, I, I think it's even better if we start off with a video that you guys brought that'll kind of give folks um, an idea of uh, the kind of things that Angel's Gate is all about. Is that all right? Great. Can we begin there? Yeah, yeah. great. Okay. Thanks. Angel's Gate Cultural Center emerged from a group of San Pedro artists in the 1970s. They created artist studios and exhibition space within the 1940s era army barracks in the upper reservation of Fort MacArthur at Angel's Gate Park. The center brings art and culture to the community through interactive classes, gallery exhibits of both local and international artists, professional artist studios, art education programs in schools, and cultural events. I love Open Studios Day because um, it's a day when the whole community can come up and really see, meet our artists, but also see what goes on in an artist studio. I'm very proud to be able to participate here today at Open Studios Day for Angels Gate Cultural Center. So one of the exciting things for me is, is to see my young students going in, meeting artists, seeing what they do, so that being an artist becomes very real to them. Um, when we're here on the, on the uh, grounds with them, taking them on field trips, if I say we may see an artist today, they just think that's like a movie star. For me, Angel's Gate represents the importance and value of expression, you know, the ability to express oneself and have that breadth of perspective in, in our, our local community. It's, I find it to be very profound, so I'm uh, happy to be here. Oh my gosh, to me it's as important as food to our well-being, our health. It's a language so powerful. What would be life without art? It's therapeutic. It's something where you could come and be calm and just also feel a type of oneness with yourself and with uh, nature 
that's really unique. That it's so natural, kept so natural, that's art in itself. And um, that it's kept simple and the art, you really notice the art. It's not taken away from it by beautiful buildings or uh, extras. There's the harbor, powerful technology. It's balanced through the art in San Pedro. Angels Gate Cultural Center is a place that unites art, community, and culture through creative discovery, exploration, and enlightenment. Angels Gate Cultural Center. Come for the art. Stay for the view. Well, that, that certainly does give us a, a sense of the, of the space. And it's been around for 38 years and has been a 501c3 for 31 years. Um, how has the mission grown? How has it changed at Angels Gate? Ah. Uh, at the beginning, uh, as Wendy likes to say, it was like an Occupy movement uh, by the artists mm -hmm. who were um, actually allowed into the space by the community to create something there, and uh, many of them from Otis Art Institute, many teachers from there too came at 10 cents a square foot, they could have a studio to work in. So they changed these barracks that you see there now mm -hmm. as uh, into uh, all kinds of uh, workspaces. We have 51 studio artists there now, and not one studio is like another, hmm. uh, thanks to the originality <laughs> of the original <laughs> artists who were there. Um, uh, the mission then was to survive and try to create something uh, going on up there to bring the community up. And I say it's up there because as you can see it is on a hills hill. Mm -hmm. uh, it was um, difficult though because the, um, for previous years since 1938 that hillside was not, uh, 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 was, was restricted. That's what I want to say. So anybody from the community could never walk onto that ground mm -hmm. and I think it had this sort of invisible shield around it and became difficult. Um, so in the early days it was survival and uh, it went through a lot of hard knocks. The Department of Parks and Rec um, had us on a year, one year at a time lease and um, uh, it became uh, uh, scary <laughs> that they could pull the rug out at any minute. Um, about uh, seven years ago we got a 30 year lease and began to actually look at the mission of this place and uh, develop a mission that was worth investing in and um, it's where Wendy and I met on the board about that time. And Judith came up with this incredible idea with one of our other board members that the mission statement should come through an organized meeting of all the artists so mm -hmm. that it wasn't just something from top down where the board comes up with an idea and tries to sell it out to the artists but we had all the artists meet and they started this incredible process with them mm -hmm. where first of all the artists got to say what they didn't want because you know how people are yeah. they have this kind of throat clearing of like when you say what do you want they start with well I'll tell you what I do not want mm -hmm. right so everybody got to put up these signs we wrote them on papers and we pinned them up around the room mm -hmm. and then Judith and John led them through this process of okay now we see what we don't want what would be the most important thing to you? And all these different artists were putting up their words about what they wanted the mission to be. And then we had dots that we put on things and it by process of elimination, we came, I mean, it was, it was brilliant. And what I think as an artist being there and also on the board is that this process made us come face to face. This wasn't email where you can be snarky. Mm -hmm you had to look at somebody else and that makes a big difference in building community in and of itself yeah. is to be vulnerable and say what you want having said what you don't want so it, it, the mission was built by the artists and we we decided that um, as a board that anything now done up on the hill has to be through an inclusive process members of the board and the artists and the staff that we all have to buy in it and this process helped us all buy the board members were in the, mm -hmm. that group too nobody mm -hmm. sat in a in an office somewhere and made this mission up it came out of this process and since then in the past year and a half everything we've done has been face to face mm -hmm. talking about it getting buy in which is beginning to create a brand up on the hill yeah. of open discovery 
open experimenting, um, values that respect uh, each other's work, uh, cooperate, collaborate, um, show up, be present. Uh, we're all living by those now. It, it has to be from the boardroom to the room room yeah. where this happens. If community residents and city officials, have they joined in with you on this cause? They're starting to, and I think he, he, this is kind of my own kind of platform here, and I think Judith would agree that all of us, and, and in our culture in general, we have this kind of mystique of the individual, and we've kind of taken individual to this point where the community is less important than the individual, but we all want to be in a community that's inclusive. We want to feel safe. We want to go and be unique and singular and do our work as artists, but we want to have a community. And people in the community have those same feelings. They may not be artists, but they still want to be respected as individuals, but they want to feel safe in their neighborhood. They want to, and so right now, I, I really feel like we are the place pulling people in, and they are beginning to respond, and it's all about being face to face. Yeah. I can imagine that, the, that your decision-making process, having to include everybody in that process, is not real fast. No. The things that decisions get made very slowly. But how, how do you go about creating those connections within this diverse community up on the hill and the diverse community of San Pedro? It's, you know, it seems to be quite extraordinary. Uh, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> slowly and surely. And uh, we d we've just decided as, um, as board members of a 501c3, it's our big responsibility to make sure that they're all insurances are in place mm -hmm. so that this place can deliver the mission, which is really simple, to provide space for artists to work to engage the community through arts education, uh, exhibits of contemporary art, and cultural events. Now that is a really clear mission. So we consult with one another about does this idea fit the mission? Artists have to share the same mission. Mm -hmm. Provide artists for space to work. Well, how does that, that, how does that impact me as an artist who has a space? You have to kind of maybe think out. But we have been uh, doing it slowly. We had an election recently that uh, called for real open discussion, and, and that was for a uh, artist representative on the board. And artists were really involved in this election. Mm. So they were talking to one another. Yeah, We inherited kind of an us and them culture, and so far it's becoming us and us yeah, a little right. bit. Yeah. And, and I think what Wendy said too, the more we behave this way, the more we are attracting um, the public. They are coming up to this center, and, but uh, just in case uh, they don't find their way, we are also putting a pop-up gallery downtown San Pedro to show um, artists work. So we have wonderful art up yeah. there. I mean, it's really remarkable, so. Well, yeah, I mean, the city of San Pedro is what it's done. I mean, the, yeah. I use that as an example all the time of how, how do you revitalize a community? You do it with the arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Where, where there's arts, there's life. Yeah. Yeah. And there are so many wonderful streets and buildings and where the military bases were and the, um, the, the, what, the areas for camping at the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's been just a wonderful community because I've always been part of it as a kid, from kid to adult, and especially with uh, the, all of these landmarks that are discoveries throughout that community that gives folks a real sense of Los Angeles or Southern California, especially during the military exchange during World War II. Yes. There were so many things that were going on, and there are a lot of history still remaining, but as we move on, Yes. And we do have to <laughs> move on. And, and we also have to uh, break, take a little short break here, and, uh, and then we'll come back with, uh, with Judith and Wendy and, and talk a little bit more about the whole notion of the, the artists in the community and, and the impact and the importance of that. And the, uh, also the, the critical uh, aspect of having a space like uh, Angel's Gate there for the, to, to, to locus that around. So we'll be right back with more Creating Good Work Live.
You're watching Creating Good Work Live on T Radio V. Every year, 15 million teens are a victim of cyberbullying. 19,000 of those teens contemplate suicide. What if we use the power of social networking to inspire America's teens so they build each other up instead of tear each other down? Would our community be a better place? Would our country be a better place? We think so too. Getting America's teens to help one another is what the Great American No Bull Challenge is all about. Hi, I'm Dr. Oz. It's my daughter, Zoe. Hey guys, I'm Zach Beach, one of the youngest race car drivers in the country. Hi, my name is Nicole Edgington, and I'm a national spokesperson for the Great American No Bull Challenge. Each year, 15 million teenagers are cyberbullied. As a kid, I was bullied, and I never let that stop me chasing my dream to get to the top in racing. Learning how to deal with cyberbullies on your own is a complicated thing to do. So please join me. Join Team No Bull. And join the conversation. You plus No Bull. Proud partners of the No Bull Challenge. Most anti-bullying efforts rely heavily on bystanders to take action, leaving your child with no protection. The No app aims to change that. Now your child can summon the assistance of a policewoman to tell the bully no, and you get alerted in real time with a map of your child's location. With video evidence, the bully's parents can be confronted, and school officials can be forced to take action. You get increased peace of mind, and your child gets increased self-confidence. We're back with Ron and Greg. Right. And we're back with Creating Good Work Live. Our guests are uh, Judith Blonick and Wendy Milner Calloway and uh, from Angels Gate Cultural Community Center, a cultural arts center. Angels Gate Cultural Center. There yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was there somewhere. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. it is. So I, I want to hear more about the role of both art and artists in society and uh, how the work that you guys are doing is supporting all that. Um, one thing, uh, we have a program called Artists in the Classroom. We have uh, nine artists who uh, go into the classrooms for a 12 or 13 week residency. They go once a week, every week, in uh, one of the five grade levels in elementary school, and we have a couple in uh, high schools too. So we are in about 90 classrooms uh, on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. sometimes a daily basis, LAUSD and some charter schools as well. These artists, uh, are their mandate is to go in and do what you do bring your form your your work your process into the classroom and do something with the kids so that the children not only get to work with a real artist they get to learn about process and not product necessarily mm -hmm. and uh, we don't give the artist the curriculum the other thing we do is we have a community classes program up on the hill and the the those two are this is a wonderful entrepreneurial footprint if an artist like yourself has something you would like to do, a workshop or a class, you come to us and say, can I have space here? And we give you space there wow. to teach your class. Um, we do not curate the classes. We let the artists curate themselves. <laughs> if mm -hmm. they want to teach, they teach. And at the, at the, right now we have 16 artists at work at 22 classes a week up there. Um, uh, about 1,300 yeah. people are served at each year, uh, each, uh, this year, this past year, and it's uh, growing more. Um, we also have uh, open studios days. Twice the artists open their and invite their classrooms, uh, anybody in. Mm -hmm. Families come. It's a whole afternoon. There's and there's food trucks. Yes. And, and it's this Saturday. Trucks. Okay. Well <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> listen, to, <laughs> listen to Wendy. It's this so Saturday. I guess we can, we can jump to the open, <laughs> the open studios day. So let's, let's talk about that now. It's what I find remarkable is that people who haven't known much about Angel's Gate will come up and they'll go, oh, wow, there's all these different artists up here. I mean, they, they're continually surprised. So we still, uh, clearly, even though we're getting a lot of people, we're getting a lot of new people. Mm -hmm. And we're getting people from outside of San Pedro as well, which is part of 
also what we want to do is somehow it seems if you're the most popular girl at the dance, more people want to dance with you. So we're trying to get ourselves known outside of San Pedro right. because somehow having people come from other areas helps bubble up, it percolates into the local community as well. It's like, oh, there really is something happening here. Yeah. And also, who is your audience for On the Map? Um, well, this is an interesting thing. We have decided that we would do, in this idea of getting more people to know about us, we have taken artists from opposite ends of the 110 freeway, and the artists from Northeast Los Angeles will be showing in San Pedro, and their maps, artist maps, their ideas of place and history and who they are show down at Angel's Gate on Saturday. The following weekend, on the 12th, the artists from San Pedro will be showing in Highland Park at Avenue 50 Gallery, and it is their dreams, their idea of history. And what's been interesting when we did this open call is that several of the maps made by artists in San Pedro, the same impetus was had by an artist in Northeast LA to mm. make it. We I have two people who've done mannequins of <laughs> clothing, of their trips and how they see the 110 freeway. And as it turns out, the 110 freeway was originally a Tongva Trail. Uh -huh. And it became the Spanish wagon route, it became the stagecoach route, it became Figueroa Street. And one of the projects we have is somebody has walked the entire length of Figueroa and taken pictures now. And then there are people working on ancient tribal connections. So the maps are beyond what we think of as a regular map. And I think we have buses. Um, Don Kanabi, our councilman, yes. has given us a bus to take up to the October, I mean the no November 12th. Right. Yeah, yeah, gosh. Yeah. Um, and they have their councilman bringing a bus down here. So we're. Great. Oh, so that really is connecting yeah. communities. We are yes. really connecting yes. opposite ends of the 110 yeah. freeway. Yeah. Right. That's all. And these maps, uh, I've seen the first ones they're almost ready for this uh, uh, Saturday are incredible the ones from the Arroyo artist uh, collective yeah. uh, from Highland Park they they are opening it at Angel's Gate this Saturday from one to five one to five, one to yeah. five. yes there'll be so music and artists open and open studios and this on the map uh-huh so the Obviously, you're, you're trying to create this greater connection with community, and the community as a whole, not just the, the San Pedro community. And is that, I mean, do you see the influence of that uh, on, our, um, on our current society, on what's going on now? I think, it's, I, I think it is the most important thing we can do right now, is that instead of thinking of the other end of town as being other and dangerous mm -hmm. and places you don't go, we have to see that, especially in these artist maps, you see that we dream alike. There are two people who've done dream maps. We dream alike. We have an idea of being connected and at the same time keeping what makes us unique. Yeah. It, so it, it really, it, it's what we need to do. I think community is the only place left right now in this political climate where we can find cohesion, and we have to do it. Yeah, we do. We certainly do. And if if, if not through the arts, yeah, I mean, if this then is, nothing. Is, certainly yeah. not through politics. No, it certainly <laughs> has been proving that way. <laughs> so, uh, and where should the individuals go to learn more about it? Uh, we have a card. Don't we, we do. We yes. Have, so you, but you could also tell us. Angel's well. Gate yes. Cultural Center is at the end of Gaffey Street, at the end of the 110 Freeway, high up over the ocean, at 3601 South Gaffey. There we are in San Pedro. That's the number to call. Anybody who picks up that phone will give you all the information you want. But go to our website too, Angel's Gate art.org beautiful right. pictures pictures of the studio artists the art they're working on of our past shows and a little hint of the show coming up yeah, that's great we uh, also there's uh, isn't that's where the korean bell is right is that we're up behind it yeah. we're up yes. behind keep so going up yes. don't going stop up. at the korean bell <laughs> right uh, we have, we have all those nine old barracks buildings barracks, uh, yes. 
that were struggling to take care of. Yes. Remember yes. that they were built in World War II to be burned down in 10 minutes if the enemy ever got on shore. <laughs> and they so, that okay. so that tells so you. So it's, it's, it's time. Our yes. Artists of the world unite. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so come, true. It's time. come see us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Come be with us. Oh, we're, yeah. so, we're so glad yeah. that you could be with us today and, Absolutely. And, and share what's going on in, in, this, in this part of the, in this aspect of the kind of good work that's happening in our community. And we're really pleased that, uh, that you could be here. We, we understand we are your last show. Oh, you know, the interesting <laughs> you, you are not our last show, but you are our last show yeah. in yeah. this yeah. last yeah. show yeah. in this <laughs> facility, in this studio. Well, after I feel five honored. Years, <laughs> after five years, the crew is crying. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. No, they're, <laughs> they're, not. <laughs> they're cheering. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> after five years, it's, it's all uh, moving downtown. And so we will be inviting you to our new home. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. And we, that's where we will return. And that's yes. where With CalGov TV, and that's where CalGov TV will will begin uh, I operation in in uh, January. In January, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, well, uh, we like what we like what you're doing. Yeah, we yeah. we want to yeah. join well, in. Well, we we, we yeah. hope you do, and we uh, especially as we as we start looking at. Uh, cultural communities and how those uh, communities impact this city. Yeah. Again, uh -huh. thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you all. And thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll and, and the we'll, balloons we'll and see the you in a, we'll see you in a few in a, about a month and a half in okay. January. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So we can always keep up with what's going on. <laughs>